Today's episode of Texilla is brought to you by Lens Crafters. Hey, it's time to get our HD Nation on. The topic of home theater can be daunting for folks who may not be familiar with the technology or the terms that often get thrown around the discussion. Now, the good folks at Disney want to help you discover, optimize, and experience home theater. And to that end, they have offered or they have created a brand new Blu ray title called Ta da! Disney's World of Wonder. Wait a minute, this is a calibration disc. It is. Okay. And I'm a fan of them, you know. I talk often <laughs> about like Spears and Munsell, probably my favorite disc of all. Uh, Digital Video Essentials, another quality, quality title. But this one in particular, Disney's World of Wonder. Wow, for short. In HD, in Blu-ray, and... We should also point out... <laughs> I collect these things. Yeah, speaking of collecting, there's there's another like four down here. Um, <laughs> From a variety of manufacturers and uh, independent parties as well. I, I get to ask. But this you, one's about Disney. You know, I'll ask this question at the end. So, did, did, what does Disney do that separates it from the classic Robert Heron top choice Spears and Munsell Blu ray? I really think it's introducing the topic of home theater mm -hmm. and really going through it category by category and taking it from either the very beginner level all the way through some pretty advanced topics as well, okay. and everything in between. And the documentation, it's well presented. As a two disc set, it's one of the more expensive discs out there right now, it's 26 bucks. Right. It's not a lot of money, but consider it more of an investment. Uh, it also includes, like I said, the blue filter you need for doing things like color and tint adjustment, as well as a 50 plus page guide that you can also download as a PDF online. That's really, really nice. So a big component of this is not, it's not just a calibration disc, it's an introduction to why HD you know, basically what HD should look like, why it should be better, and, and what this whole calibration thing is. That's, that's totally it. And right. even to the discover part, we'll just jump right into the menu system here. Basics with Goofy. It, it, it <laughs> oh, really, theater basics with it Goofy. It really doesn't get much more basic than this, but it covers here as soon as this pops up. I have my, my good old trusty Blu-ray player grinding away back here. This is a pretty fun menu. I mean, right. take a look at this. Goofy's how-to, and it covers topics like sound, picture, displays, cables, resolution, Blu-ray technology He's and a screen big goofy size. Fan. Hey, this is the easiest I've seen it introduced. No big <laughs> words, fun, humorous, really well done. Now, if you want to get into more about showing off what your system can do, uh, or showing other people the differences and things like that, one of the cool things I saw as soon as we get back to the main menu is something called a split screen showdown. This actually shows you the difference in technology between, say, uh, a DVD versus a Blu-ray video. And let's see here if we can actually discover that. Where did I hide that exactly? Let's see here. Oh, I, I want to say it's in there. Split screen showdown. Let me just go right to it. Now this is an easy way to show the difference between a Blu-ray encoded video versus a DVD encoded video at 1080p resolution versus 480 resolution, 480 line resolution. You're not going to see the difference watching this on off, your computer screen. Uh, probably uh, not. Yeah, well, no, certainly not on the on Texilla, but but close up on a 42 inch or larger HD TV, there's a pretty serious difference. It's the it's the detail, especially in right. the fine details, like the waves, the background. It'll mm -hmm. loop that back again here, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back, but that's just a great way to say, hey, you know what, here, here is what it, the TV looks like playing a Blu-ray versus what it looks like playing a DVD, and it gives you a nice split screen to go through. Also, some of the setup, if you're into calibration, you want to do some of the optimization that gets your TV looking good. I thought their advanced brightness setup and other tools like it included, actually, I preferred it in the advanced section compared to the beginner section, but uh, it actually has a terrific optimization tool that helps you get those critical settings like brightness and contrast just right. And here we go into the premium calibration tools. Video calibration. It gives you a selection of different monitor types because depending on what you're working with, it might require a different set of test patterns. And it does explain all of this as well. And the advanced brightness pattern that I just wanted to show off. It does a full description, gives you basic instructions, or you can skip right to it and get calibrating using the remote, just like it says. And ta-da, eventually, this will pop up a pretty cool test pattern for getting things like the brightness and contrast set just right so that you're getting the maximum contrast out of your picture. Now one example of an advanced test pattern that they offer on here, this one's specifically for brightness. Now I have the brightness on the TV turned up quite high. You shouldn't actually see things like the negative 2%, negative 4%. The, the, the motion of this pattern as well as the fine detail, being able to see a 1% step, a 2% step, a 3% step, you're going to nail the exact brightness for 
your TV with a pattern like this very easily, and I really did appreciate that. Now, it also incorporates other patterns as well for things like uh, uh, getting contrast and detail and sharpness, every setting you have in your TV. And once you get all that done, it includes lots of cool eye candy so that you can take a look at your, your work, basically. All that tweaking and setting you've done, you can now take a look at some very high quality test clips. And of course, it also incorporates some audio setup as well. One of my favorites was a buzz and rattle test, which actually was really useful for things like, well, finding if you have any rattles in your room that could be caused by when your subwoofer, subwoofer is playing a really low note, so to speak. Cool. So, also, one other great tool on here was something called the Pixel Flipper. If you have a stuck pixel in an LCD or maybe you have some burn-in on your plasma, it actually incorporated a test pattern that manipulates every pixel on the screen at 24 to about 30 uh, times per second, switching it to every color, cycling all colors and movement on the screen so that, as you'll see, uh, it's a pretty intense uh, workout for a picture, and it helps essentially get it to... It's not, not going to be a guarantee fix, but at least it will give you something moving on the screen to help shake a pixel loose, maybe, or to help minimize something like burn and help uh, reduce the appearance of it. And as it loads up, you're going to see basically a whole pile of static. Oh! Here. If it actually fills the screen. Oh, that hurts. There it goes. <laughs> so it says you should run this for at least an hour. True. But not, don't leave it running overnight, or do leave you could. it running overnight? That way it won't harm the TV, especially right. once it fills in the entire screen. And it essentially is shifting every pixel with every color and stressing every single sub-pixel on that this screen. This is unbelievably painful to watch. Yeah, I will up. stop that then. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an example of a tool I really haven't seen integrated into many other products. And it even had an audio video sync tool as well where right. you can visualize how your AV is in sync or not. Mm -hmm. is the, are the lips matching what the voice is saying and vice versa if you have adjustments for that as well. In addition, lots of cool eye candy. And the bottom line really is that Disney's World of Wonder Blu-ray disc is a terrific investment for anyone looking to learn more about home theater setup and optimization. And it includes some very pretty videos to show off your handiwork as well. And one of the things funny, you mentioned this being one of the more expensive discs at 26 bucks. The yeah. reality is, is, is if you've got a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars in your HDTV, plus your Blu-ray player, plus you know you own a bunch of Blu-rays, like the fabulous season two of Downton Abbey, uh, 26 bucks isn't much to actually make sure no. your stuff looks and sounds the way it should. And a would, lot of good documentation too. Would you would you purchase if you already own the Spears and Munsell Blu-ray? Would you purchase the fabulous Disney disc? Not unless you're just curious about it. You right. get all the same functionality in a Spears and Munsell disc, along with some other very uh, I think more critical display test tools okay. in Spears and Munsell. But for the general information, wow, it's just awesome. So the more newbie friendly, or if you're getting it for you know. I, Dad, I, mom, and I cousins, think some of the pros neighbors. might look at some of the AV or the audio test tools in particular and go, "Oh, these could be a little bit better." But for the rest of us, I think it's a great investment. Nick from the good old US of A writes, "I was an early adopter Blu-ray software and purchased Power DVD eight. This has worked great, except that now Cyberlink is no longer supporting that product and therefore no longer sets its AACS updates. Uh oh. Therefore, my newer Blu-rays do not play. Does any software guarantee at least AACS?" updates for prior versions. If I switch to a hardware player, how do I know the hardware manufacturer won't do the same thing to force me to buy a new player? Nick. Oh boy. That is exactly the case. Yeah. Uh, according to the, the Power DVD website, over at Cyberlink actually, uh, the last update for the Power DVD 8 Ultra software, not even the other packages, Ultra was back in April of last year, and Cyberlink's update page, <laughs> update page states, as the development phase of Cyberlink Power DVD 8 Ultra retail version is now ended, there will be no further Blu-ray disc compatibility updates for this version. Any Blu-ray disc titles released after 2010 April may not be compatible with Cyberlink Power DVD 8 Ultra retail version. And, that, and so is that. And what they really are trying to do, though, is update the AACS, the Advanced Access Content System. AACS, what, the what's spec? The, no, no, no. What, what, what? Cyberlink is not doing yeah. is updating the AACS, no mostly more. because they don't want to deal with older software. That's exactly. Right. They're currently, I believe, on version 12, so while yes, it'd be nice if they continued <laughs> to support software that at one time played most Blu-ray movies, mm -hmm. it's not going to play newer titles, like say the new Star Wars box set, actually I'm not sure about that 100%, or even titles that aren't even out yet, like uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, right. <laughs> which I just finished watching on a player. The good news is, is that well, you can either usually get an upgrade path with software to give you a discount if you're going to purchase a newer version. So check that out because you will need to have regularly updated AACS keys in order to play newer titles as the keys get changed. And that, that is for both software titles on a home theater PC and for your hardware Blu-ray players. Matter of fact, I recently had some new discs that would not play on 
gosh, my probably closing it on four-year-old Sony Blu-ray player, and I had to, you know, update it. Totally. So, and that's that's what I'm running to. Some of the latest releases, like we were talking about, they won't play on the new players without having that that function built in. Right. And those early players also will lack functions like internal storage, internet connectivity, picture-in-picture -picture capabilities, and even processing power to be fully compatible with today's Blu-ray player specs. So there's really not even a chance of them being upgraded. And those improved capabilities and performance of the new Blu-ray players at least give me more confidence that the newer units will remain more compatible over right. a longer term compared to older uh, units were, but that's really up to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Now, two examples of older Blu-ray players that have done pretty well at maintaining compatibility over the years are LG's long ago discontinued BH200, over four years old, and that's my old player I keep mentioning. <laughs> and I refuse to let it go. Uh, CD, DVD, HD, DVD, and Blu-ray playback all in one machine. It and does take a long time to boot up a flesh. Uh, uh, like if you throw, how it would take like a minute to get a Blu-ray to start. It took a little longer than that yeah. for some of the new, especially the ones with BD Live functionality, where it's right. trying to hit the net and pull down new content, and it's old processor trying to grind through all that. <laughs> it's a struggle. This player hasn't been updated since April of last year as well, and confusingly, right. this player, when I connect it to the internet, it says there's a new update, but it's actually the older update mislabeled, and it's kind of confusing. The other Blu-ray player that's out there that is. I mean, arguably, the most compatible one ever built would be the PlayStation 3. Drum right. roll, please. Now, while the PS3 lacks support for some of the newer HDMI-specific functions, like audio return channel, Ethernet over HDMI, 3D was added as an update uh, not too long ago, and high-quality audio formats like DTS HD, Master Audio, and Dolby True HD. Now, the PS3 wasn't the first Blu-ray player, but it has remained uh, a very compatible player throughout the years, and it's still considered a reference player. Also, many Blu-ray movies, probably every Sony-owned title for sure, actually contains update code for the PlayStation 3 on the disc. So even if you rarely let it touch the internet, it, sh it should have a better than average chance of at least playing that new release. So that's another reason yeah. I think Sony's done so well in their compatibility with that player, is the fact that they've been able to incorporate code on a lot of their own titles. Yeah, it's also one so, of the... It's one tough. Of, one of the things the, the, the media companies, consumer electronics companies, learned from CD... Uh, uh, copy protection was that hey, you know, or the lack thereof is 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 CD was basically never updated. All CDs, the CD you buy today is still playable in a CD player that's like fifteen thousand years old. True, um, from the first year of CD player production. So you know this this is a nice this is a nice way for the consumer electronics companies to be like, oh, yeah. You, you might want to buy a new player now. <laughs> that, or, the, that or if somehow a rogue player ever got built by some company that was doing something that's totally out of spec and shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. they could then specifically revoke that key right. without affecting other players. That's, that's I'm the I'm pretty theory sure they have done with certain nefarious HDMI products. A, a good rule of thumb, too, for any player, if you're shopping today, take a look at the manufacturer's website for something maybe a right. year or two old and see if they have ever updated it or if they've updated it recently. Uh, every Blu-ray player should have a product support page available on the mm -hmm. internet. Companies like LG, Samsung, Sony, and those guys, they, they make it very easy to go find these software updates where you can actually just go online, right. click on a link, look up, try to figure out what the date is. You can actually do it by looking within the zip file, if it's in a zip file and closed mm -hmm. update file, and uh, get a feed for that. And, and the nice thing about the new players nowadays, the net connected devices, is that they'll usually right. phone home and see if that update's available and do it themselves. And if you have an older player and it's from a brand you don't recognize, like if it's not like, you know, Samsung, Sony, LG, something like that, yeah. if it's like, if it's a Polaroid, say for example. I have player. a Magnavox player that it was, it was one of the least expensive players going. But see if you can find out what company manufactured it, because sometimes the manufacturer, which has a different name from the sort of branded marketing name, will actually have an update for it. Painful. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Hey, it's me, Roger. I'm here at Lens Crafters because I need new glasses. These have been on my face for about four years and it's time for a change. Did you know that you can take the same eyewear prescription to a different vision care professional and actually see differently? With this in mind, Lens Crafters is designed to launch AccuFit technology, an exclusive state-of-the-art digital measurement system that delivers the best possible placement of your prescription within your eyeglass frames. One, two, three. It's exclusive to lens crafters and it's five times more accurate wow. than conventional methods of fitting your glasses. Ooh. You look cool. Futuristic. More precise optical measurements result in clearer, crisper vision. It's the moment of truth. Let's try these on. Ooh, nice. How do they work? Work really well. They don't feel any uh, heavier, which is nope. great. The lenses are super light, high tech. My great. experience here at Lens Crafters with AccuFit has been super positive. I have the best fitting and best looking glasses I've ever had. 
Now, if you want to find a LensCrafter near you, check out LensCrafters.com slash AccuFix.